going to look at looking beyond student loan as we all know the president signed the student loan bill into an act on wednesday they amended some things there that they feel like perhaps would cause some problems for students who are trying to get this loan so let us first of all have a feel of the student loan act in this time that we are in Nigeria, where things are very difficult. So what are your thoughts on the Student Loan Act? How did you receive the news of it? Well, to me, the student loan is, is a very good incentive. Uh, it's a borrowed culture from the Western world, American, and very, very good. Um, you, are not able to, you are not able to afford your fees. You have to take a loan to afford your fees. But is this same Nigeria once you graduate? Let's even look at our world ranking in universities. The first Nigerian university is not even within the first 1,000 world ranking. So that's to say. So after I've even taken the loan, I'm still under that pressure that I'm not able to compete effectively globally. So taking the loan is not an issue. If you give me a loan to go to Harvard Business School, I will gladly take it. Because I know once I'm leaving Harvard, my first job, I'm able to get over $200,000. If you give me a loan to go to Stanford Business School, I would gladly take In fact, I will even jump on here and give you a very big one because I know once I'm leaving Stanford Business School, I can get a job that is paying me $500,000 a year and I can conveniently pay the loan. But the question that should be asked is, an average graduate that has taken this student loan, by the time he leaves the school, he has come to a labor market that says that you must have at least two years work experience and yes. not be less than 26 for you to get an entry level job that you are going to be paid about 200,000 naira. Is in this society I see chartered accountants being paid 50,000 naira. And I'm asking myself, where did you get it wrong? Um, you see, a graduate, you even, I've even seen an advertisement where a graduate will be, uh, will say that, oh, you want an house of the person must be a graduate, right? It's not done anyway. So it's, it's not done anyway. So the first question that we should ask is, when the students graduate from school, are there enough companies or industries to be able to absorb them so that they will be able to pay back all their loans? The answer is a question, is a, is a question that is going to be answered at some later point in time. Yeah, we know that the president has this ambition of moving Nigeria to a $1 trillion economy. But for you to even get to that $1 trillion economy, you need to make the right investments in the right places. You need to develop your industries. You need to develop your agriculture. You cannot. If you look at the Nigerian stock exchange, over sixty percent of the companies there are from the banking industry, are from the service industry. The service industry cannot continue to grow a nation. So, if you want to provide a student a loan, like I said, if you give me a loan to go to Stanford Business School, I will gladly take because I know that by the time I'm leaving Stanford Business School. I'm able to, I'm competing not just in the United States of America, I'm also competitive globally. It's still the same country that someone that has a foreign degree will be, have a higher chance of getting a job and getting access to promotion much more than you that even have a local de degree within the same industry. So someone else has a BSc from Harvard University, someone has a BSc from University of Lagos, both of them are applying for the same job. They get the same score in the same test. Someone from Harvard is going to get that job. And even, even if both of you get that job, you, are, you need to report to someone from a foreign, from, that has a foreign degree simply because that has much more world ranking. So and why is it that the Nigerian universities do not really have that global ranking? We don't have the right investment in the education. We don't even have the right investment in the research and the policies. We are, like I said, we are using a borrowed culture. And you can only be a laggard. So the loan, Student Loan Act is very good. But where the issue is, we they get into a society and they will be able to pay back the loans and they will be happy paying back their loans. If that is not the case, then I think we need to have a rethink about it. Okay, all right. And now to Dr. Peter Gudoyo, do you think that this might be the best time for this student's loan act or do you feel like it's something we can still salvage to milk some benefit out of it? Well, we are... We are all familiar with um, the idea that half bread is better than corn. Uh, how did we get here? Uh, I think what has informed the government thinking is they need to inject more funding into the tertiary level of education uh, so that universities, polytechnics, and uh, other technical schools that come within this um, ambit can find the more funding to be able to execute the projects that they need to execute to be able to remain 
uh, in operation. And uh, they looked at it and uh, came to the realization too, you know, facing the fact Nigeria is a poor country. Um, sometimes we exaggerate how rich we think Nigeria is and how much money we think government is making. Granted uh, that so much corruption is wasting uh, some of the money coming into our coffers as a country. But uh, the truth we know is that our economy is very small when you put it in, in international context. I tell you, uh, our national budget is, is smaller than the value of Facebook, is the truth of the matter. <laughs> so Facebook can actually pay everybody in the National Assembly, pay everybody who is a minister, pay all the federal you know, civil servants and uh, even build all our roads and they, are, they won't be broke. So it's a poor country. So Nigeria recognizing that we haven't got all the money we need to be able to fund universities and polytechnics. And now came to the conclusion that the way to move forward is to inject more funding there. But they didn't want to do it by way of, uh, you know, uh, see education as a public good, which government should fund uh, without, you know, getting immediate, uh, uh, you know, payback from it. So they chose to in inject more funding into the system by way of saying that students are owing us this money. So the money will go directly to universities. It's not going to be cash handed to students. You have to understand that. But they're going to make a list of all the students who are qualified and then multiply the number of students who are qualified by the, the 300,000, whatever universities are charging, and send that money directly into the post of the universities. That way, uh, and given the kind of system they have put in place now to, to fund the students' loan scheme, there'll be regular uh, movement of, of funds into uh, tertiary institutions to ensure that the system keeps running. So to uh, uh, if, you have, if you do the kind of work I do and recognizing that we have suffered in terms of funding of universities for a very long time, this looks like a significant step forward. But we must recognize, indeed, that this may not um, ultimately solve the problem of Nigeria because education, indeed, is a public good. We can't even, the idea of borrowing, you know, this type of, uh, of system from America or Britain without understanding where those people are coming from is, is, is problematic. Americans have discovered that the student's loan scheme in their country hasn't worked perfectly. That's why, as we speak now, uh, their government is actually uh, making an effort to see if they can write off some of the loans. In Britain, um, you, you don't pay back until you're earning over 20,000 pounds and multiply 20,000 you know, pounds by the current exchange rate. And you see how, how many millions you have to earn before your can, government can approach you to start paying back your loans. And that's, that's very important. We haven't also got adequate data. Uh, it's, it's interesting that the young man with you is, is a mathematician, so he will understand what I'm talking about data. Nigeria, with, there's, there's, there's complete debt of data. We don't have enough data to be able to, to plan and ensure that this money is... Um, is going to the right places and that um, the people who are also started with the responsibility of managing it are the right kind of people. You see, see what they have done? They are talking about student loan scheme. This is basically an education issue. But who are the people who are going to administer it? It's domiciled in the in Central Bank of Nigeria. Central Bank is, is there to money, manage monetary policies. Now we are starting there with the responsibility of managing education issues, even when it looks like it's money. And so we think they have to manage money. No, but that's very, it's wrong thinking. Okay, and so ultimately, government has to recognize for our level of development that Nigeria must take out the responsibility of funding uh, the education of the citizenry. Because a society that has its talents and its young people and everybody who has the capacity to benefit from in tertiary education, fully benefiting from it, is a society that will be very easy to govern. It's a society that will generate the ideas, the understanding and the values that will move all of us forward. Go to the Scandinavian region where I do a lot of my educational research and see what those people have done with education. In, in, in all of that region, education is absolutely free. And if you go to those places, Norway, Iceland, Finland, Denmark, Sweden, you won't believe they are, they are on the same planet with us. Everything works perfectly. There's no poor person in Finland. Everybody, they don't have a lot of billionaires, but everybody seems to be in the middle. Inequality is is um, is something that they no longer talk about. So, so everybody has access to good quality education. It doesn't matter whether your parents have money or not. That's where we should be moving towards. But given our current realities, this may look like a step forward because if they manage it well, uh, more money will on a, on a sustainable basis continue to flow into universities. But as I have already put on record, the place we should be aiming at is a, is a, is a place where uh, when we get there, government recognizes that education is a public good. Once you get your education right, all other problems in society get, get fixed because you need the right people 
to be able to fix their politics, their technology, their agriculture. <laughs> All of these places are places where human beings function. And even the computer that all of us are glorifying, we always hear that uh, it's garbage in, garbage out. Without the right people, your computer cannot help anyone, including even when you're talking about, uh, you know, AI and machine learning. Human beings generate them. There's no, we're not producing any content in Africa, really. So that's why when you ask, uh, you know, uh, your computer questions, most of the answers you get are answers that, uh, that uh, have been generated by the Western world. Ask for photos. All the photos you get are photos coming from Europe and North America. We are not producing content that is helping us. So look at the people who do graphic work. Most of the photos they use to do gra graphic work are things they are getting from the internet. And all those people, you are talking to a, a black nation and you are using the, the, the photos of white people because we are not investing in our own you know, people who can give us the content we are looking for. So my sister, that's, that's where we are. Uh, we can, for now, make do with it. It's, um, it's, it's a significant step forward, but that's not the ultimate place we're going to. All right, thank you so much.